Hello everyone and welcome to ScrapeCon. My name is Itzik, I'm the R&D Director of Data Collection Automation Group here at Bright Data. And today I'm going to talk about something that I'm sure will, will change the way you perceive data scraping. I will be introducing one of our most useful and unique product, the Scraping IDE. So why? What's the challenge here exactly? We all know that, that collecting web data becomes complex every day. It used to be simpler. Nowadays, websites have evolved. Most of them are using dynamic structures. They rapidly change. JavaScript rendering, it's a standard now. Also asynchronous data loading using JavaScript and Ajax. All these making maintenance and upkeep with the data super challenging. Not only this, but all of the anti-scraping measures websites takes nowadays. CAPTCHAs, IP blocking, user agent detection, you name it. We've also got more legal and ethical concerns today with all these endless terms of service and intellectual property rights concerns. So we've got to tread very carefully now more than ever if we wish to stay on the right side of the law. This without even mentioning the obvious and traditional scale and volume considerations, data localization, time to scrape and resource considerations. Wow, what a challenge indeed. However, amidst these challenges, I'm not just here to point out obstacles. What if I could take away all these hurdles? Honestly, taking it totally off your shoulders and letting you focus on what you really want to do. What you really want to do with the data rather than how to obtain it. Well, for that I would say that scraping functions is indeed the answer. But what it is exactly? First, let's describe what's it all about. And if I need to characterize the scraping ID in a single slide, it would be it. First, as the name infer, it was always around developers in mind, and now it's on the cloud. No need to install VS Code, Puppeteer, or not at all. Start immediately. We have more than 100 ready-made templates to get you started. And after you have the data, want it sent over your Snowflake, S3, or your webbook maybe, you got it. And the most important part, it's relying on our entire infrastructure. Our huge network allows you to run at scale. But not only this, when I say our infrastructure, it means a lot more. For instance, later today, you'll be hearing a dedicated session about our amazing unblocker. You'll be impressed of what it can achieve. Here, of course, you get to enjoy it out of the box. And last, all the essential goodies are, are of course included, like preview, logs, debug output, and many more. Before I continue, a different, maybe a more simplified way to look at it would be this diagram. It's a cloud environment. You write your code on the web, a web ID. Your code then gets to run on our product servers, utilizing our infrastructure fully. And all this is easily orchestrated through our control panel. After explaining the concept, allow me to describe the major key components that forms this IDE into such a great tool. So first part is about interaction and parsing. Every scrapper knows that in most cases, when it comes to data scrapping, it usually involves two different steps. The first one usually dedicated to the action required in order to get you there. And only then the actual data scrapping begins. We've made it very intuitive and divided these steps into two different sections. Once the browser page has the data you want, call parse to trigger the next parser code section to work on it. Here, whatever data you gathered and tagged becomes available to you to scrape. It could be the HTML page itself, some API responses, or even a JSON data saved on the script section within the page. These two code sections could also be chained together to form a stage and then duplicated, divide and conquer, each stage can operate as an autonomous procedure, which derives its, itpu its input from the previous one and operates locally on the concrete data it needs to work on. The great multi-stages feature produces a genuine modularity, no more complex scripts, thinking small independent steps. The ID allows you to define two different operation modes code-only mode or browser mode. Code will usually be quicker, but if your scraping requires some interaction with a website, like clicking a button, filling up a form, or typing something into a search input box, then full browser capabilities is also an option. Same like your puppeteer code, 
would have interacted with your local Chrome. We offer hundreds of browsers available for the task. And now, a few examples on what simplified scrapping is all about. We implemented some very useful functions for you. They do all the boilerplate code and the heavy lifting behind the scenes. You just need to specify your intent. Plus Papa, for example, on our ID, this is just a function. Think of all you would have to do in order to close it yourself. Wait for it to appear, probably by using some timeout mechanism, sample the page after, click a specific region, and do it all over again should it appear multiple times. Using this function, you don't have to. Another example. If you have some anchor element on the page which you need to wait for, Again, just specified selector and that's it. You don't need to spare these five seconds waiting on it and then lose four should it appear before. No, we sample the page for you frequently and making sure that we capture it in the most optimized way possible. And by the way, solve captcha. Here, it's just another function. This function will simply solve for you any captcha presented on the page. And now for the fun part. Let's see how it really works. To get to the ID from the main welcome page on the control panel, we could either navigate through the web data option on the left or simply use explore data products button. Once we're here, we need to scroll down to hit the web scraper ID section. The first screen we'll encounter presents a pop-up featuring pre-made templates of popular websites to get us started but let's start from scratch. So this is the ID. Let's briefly explore its main sections as already mentioned. We have the interaction code section, followed by the parser one. Below them, we'll find various tabs, such as input logs and more. On the right side, we have the previous section. Here we can witness real-time rendering of the website as it would appear in a browser. Or view the HTML, should we choose the code option here. Now, before going into some coding, let's present the scrapping challenge first. By the way, I'm about to show you a real use case we encountered a few weeks ago. It's a simple yet compelling example to showcase the features we've discussed and the diverse capabilities of the ID. Let's have a look on this web page, Lazada. This is a popular e-commerce website in Eastern Asia. And we are requested to iterate through this entire list view items and for each, Collect all the brands related to it, all of them. See the load more button, we should simulate a click and load more items. And again, and again, and again, until there are no more items to load. Also notice, upon selecting different items, the menu URL doesn't change. Plus, when inspecting the page, something which is a must when you're about to scrap a website, there are a few things to notice. First, it's an unsorted list noted by this class and every element within holds a unique data ID. Soon we will use all these anchors in the code. Okay, so let's start entirely from scratch. First, let's navigate to the Lazada page, but allow me to write it like so. I prefer to have the URL sent as an input parameter than hard code it. So from the input section, add the URL param of type string, all the URL value itself. Like this. Okay, so what's next? Remember this list view item we needed to inspect? There you go. It is noted here on the page by this class name. So let's just wait for it to appear on the page while it starts loading. Like so. Now, allow me to speed up things by putting this pretty self-explanatory code Let's go briefly over it. Here I'm loading the entire HTML into this variable. Then I'm extracting an array of items from this same list container element. Now I iterate through each of them and invoke next stage function, which we didn't define yet, and also send to it both the main input URL and the specific item ID noted by this data ID selector. Now before executing it, let me declare a new stage and only then run a preview and see what happens. Go back to stage one. Let's scroll down. 
Let's hit preview. Now we can inspect the run log to see what actually going on. While in the preview screen, we can see the page loading in real time. It now starts to load. Okay, partially loaded. Now it waits for the list view item to appear. Then, once finished, we get few children record. Each contains the function to execute along with the URL and the ID is declared to be sent to it. Like here. Switching to the second stage reveals an empty children tab, but every record now appears as an input, exactly as we expect it to be. Now before continuing with the code here, an important observation. This stage needs to run per each input record that we see here. Remember the parallelization I've mentioned earlier? Well, in the collector run, all of these stages will run in parallel. Imagine we had hundreds of these. It will almost have zero effect on the entire runtime of this collector. Impressive, isn't it? Let's implement the second stage. Remember we navigate to the same page URL per each child run as it doesn't change? It means practically this. We need to wait to the same list to appear. Select an item, wait for it to be active, and all the brand items belonging to it to load. Let's see it in the page to recap. So this is the list. Every item I click, if we inspect it, of course it's its own unique ideas, as we said, and it also becomes active. Then we need to collect all the brand items belonging to it, which happen to be located here within this div noted by this class name. This is what I added. We need to collect all items, right? So the load more function will do the trick. Here the loading is not by scrolling. It uses a button click. So we need to use the function with a parameter specifying its identifier, which is this. When this interaction section is over, this is when the real scrapping begins. So after fetching the box content into an array of items, I'm taking from each its name and its data ID. So from the children records that are now used as inputs for this stage, let's pick one and run it. While the run log is telling the entire story, again, we can see the page loading in real time on the right side preview section exactly as it would appear on our local browser. So we get to see the page starts to load. Give it a few seconds. Nice, partially loaded, but the list is not present yet. Good thing we're waiting on it. Okay, now it does. And now the third item gets to be selected. And right after we can see the brand items as well as the load more button appears. Then this, the button is clicked and more items are loaded. Then bam, we have the data in the output tab, structured nicely as a double column table for the name and the data ID that we've just collected. And now another great feature. Say I wanted to fetch more data points per each element. Let's see what else is there. Okay, so we can see that each element goes by this identifier, also has this href property. What if I'm interested to collect it as well? In this case, I would need to change the parser code and add this brand URL, for example, like so. Adding HTTPS per this identifier we just saw and fetching the href value only. Now, would I need to rerun this entire step and wait for it to load again? Well, no, behold this magic button. Once clicked, my data is instantly showing. Here, I have the name, data ID, and the brand URL I just added. It is super useful also for error handling, in case I use the wrong spelling, for example, of some selector it tells me where the error is exactly. Let's fix and click, and click the repulse button again. Now, after I do, data is immediately shown. 
so I can do error fixing here. I can remove data points or even add new ones like we just saw, only of course if they appear as part of the element. The reason this can be done in independently is because all the data captured in the previous interaction code is cached and is available for me here in the parcel section. Thank you, and happy scraping.